Good morning everybody, Victor here. We are out on the boat today. We're gonna do a bunch of slow pitch jigging, some high speed jigging, gonna go out to the Golden Tilefish grounds. Thank you to V-Dad for inviting us Hi, out here. Hi, how are you? <laughs> My buddy Tim right here. He's Hello. been absolutely hammering the Golden Tilefish. Say what's up, PJ. What's up, what's going on? I hope you guys are ready for a heck of a video. I'm pretty stoked. Oh, it's a moose. Oh, it's a moose. Holy smokes, V Dad. Wow. Oh my god. Dude, that's a slug. Oh my god. That's a massive. Oh, energy is high on the bow now. Yeah. V Dad crushed it. Well, as you guys see, it is gnarly out here. Super rough, very selfish ass. It doesn't feel like a spring day. It feels like a minor, middle of February day. We got massive swells out here, every bit of four to six. And um, we've been dropping the jigs for about an hour now, 30 minutes. The boys have got one black fin and pulled off on some black fins. I got cut off and V-Dad just got the first golden tile. So it's time to get back down there. First of all, apologize because there's gonna be a lot of wind in this video, as you guys see. It is anything but calm, but I finally got a golden tile on. So a couple of weeks ago, you guys saw me post my first video where we came out here and tried to get the golden tiles on slow pitch. Did the exact same thing today, but this time I got a much bigger fish on. V-Dad's got one. PJ's already got two. He's caught two golden tiles. And uh, it's tough out here because you guys see, whenever we talk about slow pitch fishing, we always want a vertical line angle. You want it to be as calm as possible so you can st stay up and down with your fish. The rougher it is, the harder it is to feel anything, the harder it is to see if you even feel the jig hit bottom, which is the big thing with golden tiles is, these fish live in the mud. So you gotta basically bounce it, knock on their door and say, you wanna come become a catch clean cook basically. That's the only way you're gonna get them in the boat. But this is a proper one. I'm gonna guess that this fish is gonna be close to the 20 pound, if not bigger, Mark. Which is the cool thing about jigging for golden tiles is you don't really seem to get small ones. I think the small ones ignore it. There's definitely small small ones out here, but I don't think they mess with the jigs. I'm not filming what? on the camera. Oh, I'm oh, oh! Dude, these things fight all the way up. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, the cool thing about these golden tiles is unlike other bottom fish, they usually don't blow up. They can control their um, their swim bladder, their air bladder, so they can self-regulate. I mean, this guy, the whole fight, Rod doubled over, head shakes, he's trying to get back down there where he's comfortable. He does not want to see the light. And I don't want to horse this fish because I can, you, you don't know how, um, you know, how good he's hooked and when you're fishing for one good bite all day, which we basically are, you don't want to be impatient and try to rip the hooks out of them. Definitely character building weather out here. It's not small. Oh, oh yeah, look at those it's bubbles not coming small. up. Oh, 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 oh my god. Yeah. Nice. Yes, sir. Look at that. Ooh, baby. Yeah. It's yours. Thank you, V Dad. Oh, that is a stud golden tile, guys. That's a beauty right there. It might not make the 20 pound mark, but still a stud. You guys see the size comparison of this fish to the jigs that we're dropping. The reason we're dropping such big jigs is because you gotta get down there. This is a 900 gram jig, over two pounds to maintain that vertical line angle, and they absolutely crush it. So sick, dude. So V-Dad got the biggest fish of the day, 22, 23 pounder. This one is right around 18 pounds. What do we got V-Dad, what do we got? Lots of nice styles. Nice styles. Big boys. We did it. We did it good. Yeah. I did not feel much today, I'm not gonna lie. Just wasn't feeling it. Ryan caught a decent amount of tunas, didn't you? Oh, I was catching tunas. I had the tuna sauce, not the tile sauce, but it is what it is. We caught plenty of fish, it was actually a really fun day. Pretty crazy the difference of the morning vice the afternoon where we were like seeing six foot waves in the morning and fighting for our lives and now it's a beautiful sunny afternoon. So 
I think we will see you guys at the filet table. But first... Damn it. <laughs> you guys can check out Ryan's channel linked below. He's my best bud, so give him some love. Check out his channel, Ryan Mori. And yeah, like he said, we'll see you at the filet table. You guys are about to see a whole nother fishing adventure with my buddies, Adam and CJ. But before we move on, big thank you to today's video sponsor, Element. Element reached out to me back in January and for the past two months, I've been incorporating their electrolyte drink mix into my lifestyle. Whether it be going to the gym, fishing, diving, or just being out in the hot Florida sun, I'm prone to getting dehydrated. I can honestly say Element has helped me feel a lot better, especially on rough ocean days, which you guys just saw. For me, staying hydrated is one of the ways I avoid getting seasick and just feeling my best overall on the water. Everyone needs electrolytes for their physical and mental health, and Element makes it super easy and super tasty to fit electrolytes into your diet. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of sodium, potassium, magnesium, with none of the junk like sugar, coloring, artificial ingredients, gluten, fillers, or BS. Right now, Element is hooking up my subscribers with a free sample pack. All you guys gotta do is pay for shipping. Go to drinkelement.com slash Landshark or click the link in the description box below. And you guys can try it totally risk-free because Element offers no questions asked refunds if you don't absolutely love it. Big thank you once again to Element for sponsoring today's video. I'm about to whip myself up my favorite drink mix, which is the watermelon flavor, headed off to the gym. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Good morning everybody, Victor here. I got Young Malouse. What's up guys? And CJ. Yo. So we are back on the Key West. You guys haven't seen this boat in a long time. CJ invited me out, we got Adam, and we're starting the morning looking for sardines, cigar minnows, threadfin herring, basically anything that bites our sabikis. And it's kind of sporty out here. It's gonna happen today, listen. I called Vic, I'm like, gotta bring the jig you're gonna lay up on the jig Vic's gonna be jigging all day while we live bait he's probably gonna outfish us let's i see what, know i am let's see what happens ah. are you ready for this are you ready for this ah. look at this i'm ready we're about to be strung up early morning sardine chew cj and look at this a little oh my gosh tell sure. me that doesn't get you excited Chewing. oh it gets me excited jay's got the same thing going on on this side cover it up boys the best bait you could possibly get in Florida. Probably the whole world. Hold this one out. Vic knows the deal. Look at that. <gasps> Beauties. It just started biting once the sun peaked up a little bit. Started picking some cigars and now we're catching sardines. And the boys have put a hurt on them here in the past 10 minutes. We've caught like 60 baits. Oh, well, that one's a unit. All right, guys, as you see, it is uh, anything but calm out here very sporty very dicey and it's never that easy to tell on video how rough it is so i'm gonna try to put the gopros low to the water keep in mind we're in a 19 foot boat with three guys this is <laughs> all day three to four slop all day with and a six foot roller yeah yeah it's it's nasty no doubt all right guys it is so rough out here right now, but letting the bait out on the first drift, or second drift actually, and just hooked a nice doll, probably like a 10, 12 pounder. And with this north wind, you'd expect them to bite all day. Should be able to pick fish off all day, but we'll see what happens. Nice, Monty. Dude, I'm gonna fall in. Beautiful little pole, probably like a 15 pounder. First fish of the day, you can't complain. He's all lit up, dude. That's sick. Hold it sideways. Come now. Nice. Okay. No! No! <laughs> Lost him before like that. All right, he's just gonna get laps in there. Sorry, buddy. You'll, you'll get ice in there. What was that? They, I literally thought that was about to happen too. Nice dolphin. That's a 20 pounder, dude. On a spinner. Swam right up to the boat. You! They got a, oh buddy. They just... That's a nice one, dude. Can't believe you just came to commit suicide. They do that a lot, bro. Crazy. That's a 25 pounder. Hey, tell me what's up. Dumping me. 
So I was just jigging, we all had our lines out, and I was like, there's a dolphin right there. 20 pound dolphin just swam into the spread. Jay grabbed a spinner with a free line hook on it, tossed it a sardine, immediately just went for it. He's got a nice dolphin. Spinner, there he is now deep. Tight weight. Oh, Becker! Oh, you yeah. got Is it? Yeah. Right when you got this, freaking SPJ. Okay, as soon as the fish comes in the boat, freaking pop a new bait in there. I'm bringing it to you. I'm going deep. No, no, we're, I'll, one more circle. The dolphin calm down. Hey, watch your feed, Jade. That hook is in them. That jig is in them. Hell yeah. Perfect. A little double header, boys. Double header for me Not and Jay. Bad. Not bad. That's how you turn it around real quick. All right, guys. I got smoke on the slow pitch about 200 feet down. This is probably our fourth drift at this spot. Um, CJ caught a real nice dolphin, Adam caught a nice dolphin, blackfin, absolutely sloppy out here. And um, that was yours or mine? Mine. You sure? Yeah, mine just died. I mean, it looks like it's gonna be a decent two. Yeah, yeah. Same trade up and down. You might have to throw me some of this footage back and not pop it back. Never hurts to uh, throw the jig. I mean, you guys know I love jig fishing, but we got um, two or two sardines up top and then one on bottom, or one kind of deep. But this jig was like 200 feet down, which the tunas could be down there. You know, we're in 300 plus feet of water. You never know where they're gonna be sitting in the water column, so it never hurts to jig. Doing that signature tuna pinwheel. They'll make that first run and then they just do big circles. There he is right there, guys. Not, not 15. No? No, he's not. I mean, he's a keeper. He's a keeper. <laughs> Check it out. Smokes. This is a uh, Mustad Staggerbaugh 250 gram jig. Caught a lot of decent fish on this jig right here. <laughs> Alright guys. <All> right, guys. <laughs> it's the end of the day. Adam is feeling a little silly, but you guys can check out his channel linked below. Moving weight fishing. Check it out. See, on the beanie. On not no, on the shirt. Not on the shirt today. But on my hat, he's got some merch too. I don't have merch, so you can support Adam. Look at that. He's my good bud. And uh big thank you to CJ for taking us out once again. Thank you it was honestly I, I did not think we were going to be able to fish i thought as soon as we were going to stop the boat we were going to start taking him over the side it was big out there but we got it done we got two nice dolphin two tunas definitely a pretty slow bite what was that one right there nine pounds on the small one nine and a half let's see the dolphin i'm so going to be big. 10 pounds okay hold on i'm gonna uh 15 15 or 16 and 18. i'm gonna say 17 and 21. Probably, yeah, you're probably right. 17 and so you 21. you got 13. What wow. did Vic say? Papa, dad, dad. He knows how to move weight and read weight. 16.7. Let's call it 17. 17. That one's going to be 21. 19. You guys, I know you got confidence in me. It's going to be 21. It's going to be 22. I think it's a dick, Because I can't. 
That thing dogged you on the spinner. Wow, I'm off. 21! Wow. <laughs> if you guys struggle with tuna, filleting tuna, I'm going to show you the easiest way to tackle these little black fins. What you're going to do is, right here behind the head, make sure you get all that head meat. You kind of follow the natural contour around the collar of the fish down here. Okay? Now, Brookie, slide on over that way. For some reason, when it comes to pelagic fish, so I'm talking about tuna, dolphin, wahoo, non-scaly fish, this is my preferred method for filleting. When I'm on this side of the tuna, I like to get my knife right on the spine there and kind of work down. And black fins have a really tough uh, piece of skin right there that a lot of people struggle with. So I'll just go real superficially, get my knife on the tuna spine and work my way like that, okay? On the spine, all the way until I get to the tuna's back though, okay? I'm gonna flip them around. The, the thing that people struggle with when it comes to flying tuna is because they get all lopsided. If you got problems with that, Make your initial outline of your tuna on both sides without removing the fillet. So we did that on that side. Make that tail cut. Once again, I'm going to work up. Instead of doing this, I kind of like to pull the knife towards me with these pelagic fish and get my knife on the tuna spine. Okay, until we get to the backbone. So now I'm on the backbone on both sides. Now I can break through those bones, break through the pin bones, down on this side of the backbone. Okay. So look, there you got one side of your black fin. Okay, now I'm gonna flip them around. And I can do the exact same thing on the other side. So, break through the pin bones right there. Get this tip of my knife right here. Go down on the other side of the backbone. And that's it. And look, there you have two Gorgeous piece, pieces of blackfin tuna ready to eat. There's your blackfin. Before we get started cooking, we gotta give our girl, Brookie Chris, behind the camera, a round of applause and a little promo. You guys, I don't have any merch, but Brooke has these very cool lobster shirts that I'm wearing. You got your signature Florida lobster tails on the back. I think it's a very sick design. And then you got your Florida Lobster Co. right there. So Brooke actually hand makes those nuts right there in the corner by hand, all by herself. You guys can find it linked below at floridalobsternets.com. So this video was a combination of two different trips. You guys saw the black fin and you saw the golden tile fish. I wasn't too happy with the footage from the golden tile fish, so I didn't want to skimp you guys on some footage, so I combined them. So we got our perfectly portioned four to seven ounce pieces of this gorgeous golden tile fish. Now I'm very fired up, very passionate about tonight's cook. I got a homemade miso mayo marinade that's gonna go on top of this fish. We're gonna hit him with the broiler. So in here, we got sriracha, we got freshly grated ginger, some kupi Japanese mayo, as well as um, white miso. So that's like a soybean paste, very rich flavors. The ginger balances it out, the sriracha turns up the heat. The mayo is a nice fat layer because fish in its nature is very lean. So you can afford to put a lot of fat on fish. We're just gonna hit it with a very basic, you guys see pretty much we always put pepper on fish. Just a little salt. I'm not gonna go overboard because mayo as well as our miso is already pretty salty in nature. Coriander is gonna be the only dry spice we're using. Coriander, it's just a very fresh, aromatic flavor. Before we marinate our golden tile fish in a saute pan, I just browned up some onions. We're gonna do a onion, spinach, and mushroom 
couscous to go along with our fish, as well as some asparagus and baby broccoli. So I just put a little knob of butter in here, our mushrooms now and some butter. Okay, both sides are coated. Now, we're gonna take our little miso mayo, and we're gonna put it right on top of our fish. Fish going in the oven, 350, and we'll check on it in about 15 minutes, and then I wanna put it under the broiler the very end. We're gonna finish off our mushrooms and garlic with a little spinach, we'll let that wilt down. Look at this, spinach, mushroom, garlic, onion. Delicious flavors. You guys ready for this? We got our Israeli couscous with mushrooms, sauteed onions, garlic, scallion, and spinach. So that's the first thing we're gonna go down with on our plate right here. Now we have two veggies. We got our baby broccoli. So everyone's gonna get a little baby broccoli. Okay, so we got our baby broccoli. Now we're gonna go in with some asparagus. Oh my gosh, look at this. Hold on, we, we never do enough of this. Look at, admire that jiggle. That golden tile, that's just speaking eat me. And then this is that mayo, and when you put it under the broiler, broiler, all those sugars caramelize, and you get that signature, just, you know, the brown flavor you get with food when it's like slightly burnt. But look at this, nice and tender, okay, right there. It's gonna be savory, it's gonna be a little spicy. Well, there's a little sriracha in there. So juicy. I had some scallions and carrots just shredded and I tossed them in a little sugar and vinegar. It's just gonna be a nice little garnish as well as just kinda, you know, it's something acidic that will cut through all those really strong flavors. This is gonna be a good one. That was our work, Victor. I'm glad I came in to watch you do that. Thank you. That was good. So good. like explosion of flavor like it was amazing i don't know like I, i'm like speechless really good. oh so good. man gabby is right the first bite you put in your mouth is an explosion of flavor she described it very well that was i mean this is really something out of this world from down deep the bottom of your heart and the ocean mm. man yeah, that big piece of fish. Oh yeah, is that ginger that I taste? Yeah, you got ginger, miso, you love miso. I do love miso. Sriracha. At this point, I feel like there's not many fish that just like blow my mind. <laughs> but this is definitely one of them. I don't know if it's the type of fish with this recipe, but it's absolutely amazing. This is at the top of my list. Victor literally knocked this recipe out of the park. This fish is delicious. It is a very large flake fish. It's really meaty and it's so delicious. Look, that's an entire flake right there. And boy, is it amazing. That was artwork that tastes as good as it looked. That was amazing. I'll agree with Brooke that that, that one was real high on my list. But I was super excited to try Golden Tile because I heard so many great things about it. In trying it, I agree, it's one of the best fish I ever had, but it's still hard to tell how much credit I can give to the fish and how much credit Victor deserves because that recipe was something new that I've never had and it was it was spectacular. But that Golden Tile definitely, definitely helped. This has got to be the best way to eat Golden Tile. Um, like everyone's saying, between the recipe and just the taste, uh, real thick fillets, uh, just incredible. Like I love miso and this is a great twist. Uh, well done, Vic. I loved it too. The seasoning was so good on the fish. The couscous is delicious. The crunchy vegetables, it was just all great. Um, love this meal. Good job, Vic. 
Thanks for having us here. Thank you guys all for the kind compliments. There's nothing more rewarding than cooking for the people you love. This, I mean, I love to cook, but then seeing everyone's expressions and how much people enjoy it, that's what it's all about. I have a ton of fun in the kitchen, and I love to share it with you guys, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you everybody for the kind words, and I will catch you guys in the next one.